In this video, I'm going to share some of the updates that I've made to the Craigslist clone. So if you're not familiar, I have this Craigslist clone I built on my YouTube channel and I have it available for sale on my website. So every once in a while, someone comes along and purchases the Craigslist clone. And what I get quite often is some feature requests. So people want to add additional things or change things around a little bit. So currently I have this on sale for $199. And you can click the view demo link to test it out or you can simply click add to cart to purchase it so in this video i'm going to look at some of the updates that i've made just in this last couple of days and one of the most obvious things here is this admin navigation so once you're signed in with a admin account you have this dashboard where you can see a summary of all of the information on the app so here you can see that i've got 64 users on this test app and there are 67 posts and two pages. Previously, I didn't have pages as part of this application. So pages were hard coded in the app, but now we can add them into the database. So we also have this latest posts and latest users. So this just shows a summary of the last few users and the last few posts. If we go down to categories, I've added an option that allows you to modify all of these categories and you can actually modify them in two languages. So the default one is English in this case, but if you have a second language on the application, then you can add the secondary language for the name. So the name in this case gets used as part of the breadcrumb navigation. And here at the bottom, we have this parent category. So that is a category in which this uh, child category will sit within. So that becomes obvious once you look at the home page. So on the home page, we will have this structure so we'll have the community, which is a parent, and we have these child categories underneath. So that allows you to move this category to a different part of the home page if you wanted to. And in here, you can also add new categories or destroy existing categories. So now let's look at the pages section. So previously we didn't have this. This is a new part of the app. So we can edit a page. So I've added two dummy pages already and we're using action text. So that allows us to do some basic styling of the content. So I've just pasted in dummy content, but you can change this to italicized or strike through, or you can even make the headline text. So I've got this as bold text, but I will change it to a headline. Let's remove the bold. I'm gonna click this button that gives us a heading text. I think it's a H2 tag. The styling here is quite nice because everything's kept very clean and simple. You just need to focus on the content. So you just want to do headlines followed by paragraphs of text. So I'm going to save the page and now you can see the updated page. This is what people will see on the front end of your site. So it's quite easy to add new pages. And we'll go ahead and add a brand new page. So let's create a privacy policy. And I'll add some basic dummy text just to fill out the page. I'll add a heading in here. So this just shows you how easy it is to add new pages to the website. So we'll do one more title. So your website becomes kind of like a CMS, a content management system. So you can add as many pages as you want here. And once we save this, we can see the new page. And if we look at the left navigation, we've got these pages adding underneath. So each page will be added here. So now when anyone visits the site, they can come and click on any of these links to the pages that you've created. So again, this admin navigation, that will only appear if you're an admin user. So we do that in the back end, we can assign a user as an admin, but I'm gonna get down to posts here and look at some of the posts that people have made on the site. So in here, you can go ahead and edit an existing post that someone has made. So maybe they've added uh, some profanity or, or some spam message or spam links. You can come in here and modify the post or you can also just delete the post entirely. So we have this delete option. And then finally, we also have a user section. So in here, you can come and see all of the users that have signed up to the website. 
but we can't modify anything here because we're only storing the email and password for that user and we can't control the password. They have to reset the password themselves if they forget the password. So there is that option on the front end of the site, but we do have the option of deleting a user if we want to remove them from the site. So back on the dashboard, we can get a snapshot of everything that's going on on the site. But if we go to the front end of the site, we'll look at some of the categories now and the posts in there. So when we click on a category, we can see a list of the posts. And once you click on one of the posts, then you can get more details. So we have a title, a description, and they can attach images to a post, but in this case, there are no images, but we can reply to the post. So once we fill out this reply form, the email will go directly to the user that created that post. And we also have the option of printing the page. There is another thing that I want to show you under the post section. So I'll click on a different post and we will look at the location attached to it. So if you add a location when you create a post, it will automatically create this little Google map on the right side of the screen. So this Google map is created automatically in the back end based on the uh, location that you enter into the post page. So let's sign out now and have a look at the site when we are signed out. So we can still see our links, our pages on the left side, but now we've got this new post section and our navigation for the admin has disappeared. If we want to create a post, then we will need to sign in first or create a new account. So there's one more thing that I want to show in this video, and I think this is probably the biggest update that I've made. So here you can see that there's just a blank white space but if we have more than one language in our application, then we can have a select field there to change languages. So I'm gonna show where you can change this. So this is in the application.rb under the config folder at the base of our application. So I'm adding a second language here for Portuguese and you'll see that the locales, the config locales folder, there are some different languages already in here. So I've already set up a language file for Portuguese and you can open this up and you will see all of the translations for different parts of the website. So if you scroll down here, you will see that there are lots of different translations. And once you change anything within the config folder, you need to restart the Rails application. So once you do that, then you will see that the page has automatically got this select field, so this language select field. So I've built this in to detect what languages are enabled. And if there's more than one language enabled, this select field will appear. And once we change the language, then we can see that some parts of the site are translated for us. So there are other things that we will need to do manually. So if we wanted to have the translation for the categories, we can do that in the back end of the site. So I've added a feature to do that. Um, I think I showed it to you earlier, when you're modifying a category, you can have a different title for your second language. So I'm going to sign in really quick just to have a look at the categories again. And if we go to the existing categories, and let's just click on one. So I've already made the change for one category in here, which is the activities category. So if we open it up, you will see that there's a translation for Portuguese none of the other categories have been translated but you can do this if you want to so it allows you to have the categories in both languages so just to give you an example let's go back to the home page and we'll look at the categories so you can see here that activities is in english let's change it to portuguese and it's been translated so if you did that for all of the categories then changing the language would reflect across almost the whole site so one of the really cool things about this language is that once you click on a sign in page or a sign up page, the actual notifications that you get are also translated into the language. So in this case, we have device for our sign in and sign up uh, for our authentication, but device also comes with the Portuguese translation file if you add it to the site. So in this case, we can see that by clicking new post here. And so once we click new post, it will tell us that we need to sign in. And you can see that the translation is actually in Portuguese. So it actually works across all of these nice little features on the site. So that is all the updates I want to talk about in this video. If you're interested in purchasing the Craigslist app, then you can find the link in the description below and you can purchase it on my website.
As always, thank you guys so much for watching the video and I will see you all in the next one.